Hi, welcome to today's video for IGCSE and GCSE economics, the topic demand and supply. Now, first of all, we're going to be covering the topic demand. And we start off by the definition. Demand refers to both the willingness and the ability of customers to pay a given price to buy a good or service. Now you can see over here that there are two components, willingness, ability. Willingness is often described as desire. So say for example, I have a desire to buy a Lamborghini or a sports car for that matter, or a private jet. So everyone has that desire, but do they have the ability? Ability is when you can pay for that product at that price. So if you want a private jet, are you able to pay the millions of dollars? When you have both component, that's when it's called as demand, all right? So sometimes this is referred to as effective demand when you have the willingness and ability. So the amount of good or service demanded at each price level is called the quantity demanded. So you gotta know the amount of good or service, right? at each price level is called the quantity demanded. So at $5, you might have a demand for like 100 quantities, okay? Say for example, we're in the supermarket and at $5, right, we're willing to buy around 100 Coca-Cola bottles, okay? But if the price dropped down to $1, right, maybe you would be willing to buy 200 you know, Coca-Cola bottles. So at a given price, right, the amount that you're willing to buy is called the quantity demanded. So the law of demand states that when price increases, the quantity demand decreases. This is very normal. Say for example, that if a burger was priced at $5, right, maybe the quantity demanded would be 10 by a customer. Okay, that's a lot of burgers for someone. But you get the image, right? If you're in a fast food shop and you see that, okay, the price of a burger is $500, right? Maybe the quantity demanded at that price would be one or two. But if the price decreased, then there are more customers who can afford that product. So the quantity demand increases, right? Um, so the relationship is an inverse relationship. Inverse means that when one thing decreases, the other thing increases. So when price decreases, quantity demanded increases, right? In here, it's stated that when price increases, quantity demanded decreases. So when things get more expensive, then the amount, the desire or like people, the amount of customers that are willing to buy it decreases. So the reasons for this relationship is that customer feels their like customers real income falls um so say for example that they don't have the amount of disposable income like the amount left after paying for their expenses you know there's a certain amount that you can spend on concerts food and different things right so that's why like when the product's price rises it might fall out of your income range as price increases, less customers are able to pay and therefore are less likely to buy that product. Okay, so let's move on to demand curve. Now, the demand curve, if you can look at it, has two axes, right? So the x-axis has the quantity demanded, QD, and the y-axis has price. So together, you can see that it's a downward sloping curve. And you can see that this is at zero and this is at maximum. So at lower prices, right, the quantity demanded is really high. So say this is $1. At $1, the quantity demanded is around 1,000, okay? But at $100, the quantity demanded is say 50. So you see over here, at higher prices, the quantity demanded is really less at low prices, the quantity demanded is really high. So you can see that it's a downward sloping curve and it's indicating over here that at P1, 
when the price is really high, the quantity demanded is at this level over here. But when the price drops to P2, the quantity demanded level goes to Q2, it increases, okay? So the market demand refers to the sum of all individual demand for a product, right? So this is measured by adding up all individual demand at each price level. So the market demand is basically when you add everything from here to here, you'll get the total demand. Okay, so the determinants of demand. Now, first of all, what are the key components that drives desire and ability to pay for a product at a given price? So um, you'll see a lot of the factors over here will resonate with yourself. You'll find it that, yeah, this is the reason why I also desire a certain product. Um, so it could be either because of your habits, fashion, and your taste, right? Um, the demand for coffee could always be high because it's part of your habit or it's part of your taste for having coffee. Um, so any changes in habits, fashion, and taste can affect the demand for all types of goods and services. So you could have like a product like say uh, skinny jeans be in a fashion right now during the summer when if it's in fashion, right? So the demand for that product would go really high. And winter jackets would maybe not be fashionable during the winter and they could be like another type, right? So the demand for that product might decrease. So anything that becomes fashionable or trendy or becomes like part of the habit, that demand kind of increases. Okay. Um, when you have income, right? This is very true. When you have more money, you're going to spend more, right? So therefore, like higher levels of income means that there is more demand for products. So if a country where workers are being paid a lot more, right, than comparison to other countries, like say a person working in Qatar, so that person might be like given a higher salary compared to working in another region. So that person might be able to afford more. So higher levels of income means they're able to buy more. Let's move on to substitutes and complements. So the word substitute means that when goods can be used instead of each other, the prime example is Pepsi and Coca-Cola. I swear, I feel like if you put like two glasses beside each other, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference because both of them seem the same. So if there are like substitutes that are close to each other, they affect the demand, right? So say if Pepsi's price is $1 and Coca-Cola's price is $1, but then tomorrow Pepsi decided to increase their price to $2, right? So if Pepsi increases the price to $2, the demand for Coca-Cola would increase because that's how substitutes work. When one product has the price rise, the demand for the other product increases because, you know, it's more cheaper. Complements are products that are jointly demanded. So say, for example, your cell phone and your phone cover or your cell phone and your screen protector or say, you know, power bank and a cell phone. So these are called complementary products when two products need each other, right? Um, so if you have like, say, for example, you have car and fuel. So when your fuel price increases, the demand for cars will decrease. So that's the thing. Complementary products means that these products um, affect demand together, right? So if the car's price increases, right, then the demand for fuel also will decrease because, you know, people cannot afford the car, so they don't need fuel anymore. So these are the two things that go together. Then we have advertising. Now, whenever you have persuasive advertising, it increases the demand. That's why you'll notice that a lot of time advertisements and commercials use um, famous uh, pop stars uh, like BTS or they use uh, famous footballers like Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, so these things affect demand as well. Uh, other things like government policies where, you know, rules and regulations, like say, for example, you've got like a ban on public smoking, so that will decrease the demand for um, smoking. Or you have higher taxes on cigarettes, which makes it less affordable to smoke. So the demand for it will decrease. Now, a lot of people will just, you know, crack a joke here and say that, nah, it doesn't affect them. But it does in real life. Like if it increases from, say, $10 to $15, a lot of people will reduce the amount of cigarettes they smoke. Right. 
the economy. The economy also has a huge impact on the demand for products. So when the economy